<laughs> What's up, modern steaders? Today, I thought we'd talk about the perfect little storm that got me and my family into modern homesteading. Woohoo! Before I get started, I'd love to hear what got you into modern homesteading or what's got you thinking about it. Go ahead, leave it in the comments below. I'll wait till you answer the question. So the beginning of our modern homesteading days for us started about nine years ago. Gina was pregnant with Olivia at the time. The house we were living in, the upstairs of the house we had to gut to get our bedroom up there nice and livable and make a bedroom for our baby, Olivia, at the time. It was a complete gut and rehab. The whole upstairs took out down all the interior walls. It wasn't insulated. The house was built in 1890 with rough cut lumber and if I was working a full-time job we were remodeling the upstairs of the house and I was going to the police academy at the time so I could work as a police officer part-time on the weekends. A little overworked, stressed out, and a new baby on the way and the upstairs of the house wasn't completely finished yet. I was getting some pretty bad hot burn and stomach ulcers. Shortly after Gina had Olivia she was in the hospital for a week to two. And after just having a new baby, you get pretty scared and your eyes get wide open. And you start looking around, scratching your head, asking yourself some questions. And that's when we really dove deep into modern homesteading. That summer we also started gardening. I started reading more and more on alternative lifestyles. We got a subscription to the Mother Earth News magazine. We kind of got hooked and it just took off from there. We did move into the upstairs of our house on time, which was nice. We didn't have much time to spare, but we had it, the nursery all set up and we were living up there, so life was good. We started reading what we could and all the books we could find. We started contacting people in our area that could help us out. And we just learned as much as we could. That following summer, 2009, Food Inc. came out and that just put more pieces of the puzzle together for us. That summer we ended up raising some chickens for meat birds, we got our first egg layers, we had a few turkeys going on, and we had two pigs. And that movie Food Inc. just inspired us. We started learning about Joel Salatin, and we just dove in deep. All of our spare time was taken up about learning about this kind of lifestyle that we wanted to live and changing our status quo to get us where we wanted. So after raising chickens for eggs, turkeys for Thanksgiving and Christmas, meat chickens, and our own pigs for pork, we couldn't go back to having store-bought meat again. There's no comparison. We were ruined. Ruined in a good way. We weren't ever going to have store-bought meat again. We didn't want any of those antibiotics. I mean, the taste, the texture, the color. There's just a huge difference between homegrown and store-bought meat. Once you try it, you can't go back. We have fun. We invite our friends over. We'll cook up a ham or we'll cook a chicken up. Cook up some breakfast sausage. And they're just like, Al, you ruined us. We're never going to be able to eat a ham from the store again. And I just chuckled and laughed at myself and said, I hope they get the bug too. Fast forward a little bit and I was laid off from my full-time job and we decided that winter come springtime, we we're going to move to Mass to where my family's from and still live. And we moved down there, got a house with three acres, had a little urban homestead. Our three acre urban homestead in Mass, 24 laying hens. We didn't raise any meat birds there. We raised meat rabbits and then we had two huge gardens that we had going on and I, we didn't know it at the time but we were doing the back to Eden method and it worked awesome. We had huge plants, organic plants that we never had to water. Such great success so we, won't, we can't wait till we can start doing those kind of gardens here. We also had bees there, a bunch of apple trees. Um, the chicken coop setup we had was really slick. If I can find pictures I'll put them in right now. We're not, we haven't always been very good with taking pictures, unfortunately. But if I can find some in the coop, I'll show them to you. So I'll try to describe it a little bit. The chicken coop was like a shed and it had a lean-to roof off the side of it that we had all closed in with chicken wire. The chicken wire was down and then buried in the ground out, I think two feet, two and a half feet. Then on the back wall, we had a little shelf. We had our rabbits set up and their poop would fall down below. Rabbit manure would fall down below into a bin we had full of worms and we were doing worm composting. I had a little, look like a gold rush, um, gold sift and tremel. I'll show it to you sometime. I have it here at this homestead. And it was nice, we could just throw all the dirt and the worms in and it would separate out the worms, 
the worm casting, and the unfinished compost. That was kind of a pretty neat setup we had there with the rabbits. I'd love to get into it again someday. I miss more of the rabbit manure and everything it did for our gardens. It was really nice being back in Massachusetts around my family, but just being in that area in Mass and the suburbs didn't resonate with our souls. So we started looking for property we could find. And we found this property where we're at. We bought it and then a year before, then the following year, May of 2015, we moved up here, had the shell of the house built and then we moved in and finished off the whole inside and I'll try to link some photos right here and let you know what the house looked like when we moved up then we finished it all off ourselves. and 2015 we worked on the house got that all up and going last spring we worked on getting the infrastructure to raise our chickens and pigs all out on pasture and by the time we got all that said and done we only had enough time to put in a small garden so one thing I will say is don't burn yourself out, pace yourself. We were able to do a lot more in the summertime, but we didn't do much with gardens, unfortunately, last year. But this year, that's going to be our big push. We're going to want to get some gardens in here. Pretty soon, once all the snow is gone, we can start putting in some garden beds. So I really believe that we, we overestimate what we can get done in a year. And we try to burn ourselves out a lot of the times. We need to learn to pace ourselves. And we, then we underestimate how much we can get done in say five or 10 years. So that's a good reason why it's nice to have a five or 10 year plan for your life and your homestead and everything else. Cause you can get a lot done. You might not be able to get it all done in a month, but five years, 10 years, that's a pretty long time and you'll be able to accomplish a lot. So keep hanging in there, have fun with it. We do this because we love it. So we don't want to get sick of it. So keep on changing the status quo, like the same way we're doing it here. And we'll see you tomorrow right back here at Lumna Acres.